Hello and good afternoon, good morning or good evening to you, depending on which country you're joining from. Um, and welcome to the DynoBand Hexagon webinar on freeform bending, inspection and auto correction for the tube and wire production industry. My name is Mark Luttighuis uh, and together with uh, Gunther Schulman from Hexagon and Ru Rupert, my colleague Ru Rupert, we will uh, host this webinar for you. Before we start with the webinar, we'd like to share some conduct with you. So today uh, your microphone and cameras will be muted during the webinar. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat section uh, in Teams. And um, while you do so, please also uh, type in your name so we can follow up after the webinar uh, to answer any questions you might have. Uh, due to the large number of participants, we agreed that uh, that we will follow up afterwards instead of during the webinar. Furthermore, the webinar will be recorded and will also be at your convenience. So whenever you'd like to have the recordings, just reach out to us and we will provide them to you. The content of this webinar. So first, Kunter will start to uh, give a small introduction on Hexagon. Then afterwards, I will do the same for DinoBand. Uh, we will give an explanation on the equipment and the software that we use during the demo. And my colleague Ru will give a live demo at the end. So now we start first with uh, with the introduction of Hexagon. We have to switch screens, so uh, we need a minute just to go into the other presentation. Please bear with us. Yeah, hello Mark. Thank you very much for the introduction and also from my side a warm welcome to everybody who is participating this meeting. Mark, I remember a few weeks ago we had a phone call and talked about all the exhibitions where we could not participate and uh, develop some ideas how to get in touch with our customers. And then the idea was born to do a webinar to show what we both companies would show on, on an, uh, for example, tube and wire show in Düsseldorf. And therefore we decided to do this webinar, this live webinar today. And to everybody who is listening to us, uh, we are happy that you're with us and uh, look forward now to show you what we want to show you. But before we start to go into the live demo of the freeform correction process, let me give you a short introduction about hexagon tube and wire solutions. Our metrology is dedicated to be used in the production industry. And if we look to the product overview, you find on the left hand side uh, tube and wire inspection uh, solutions based on the hexagon absolute arm. The hexagon absolute arm is a versatile uh, solution for any metrology purposes. And this includes also tube and wire inspection software. On the left hand side, you see the absolute arm with the tube probe, which is, allows you an optical tube measurement. On the right hand side, you see the hexagon arm with an ERA 6 scanner, the high end scanner, which allows you to scan complex tube geometries in order to have a detailed information wherever it is needed, for example, for freeform tubes. On the right hand side, you see the more or less automated solution, Tube Inspect. We launched a new generation of Tube Inspect a few weeks ago. And you see here on the picture the P8.2 and the P16.2 in the HRC solution, which means with the highest resolution we can offer to you, it's 12 megapixel. Hexagon has a long years experiences in tube and wire measurement. And when we look to the history, we easily will find that we started already in 1973 with the first uh, articulated arm for tube inspection, the Vector 1. In two, 1994, the first optical tube measurement system was launched called Optisches Leitungsmessystem. And since the first generation of tube inspect was on the market, we continuously develop on this solution as well. When we look to the latest launched hexagon provided to customers, we see on the one hand side important launches in 2018, 19 and 20, where hexagon launched a new generation of absolute arms with the RS5, RS6 and RS square scanner. The last one was just launched a few weeks ago. And also a few weeks ago, we launched the new Tube Inspect 8.2 and 16.2, uh, 
in a standard and HRC version. And this version, which what you can see on the right hand picture, can be used also for fully automated measurement with a robot integration. But when we look now to the things you ask us as customers, uh, we are faced to a lot of challenges in the past decade, and we try to meet all of the challenges in every applications you provide us. So therefore, it's mandatory for us to develop and to work on the inspection solution, especially on the software. And here you see some samples we have to cover with our solution. On the left hand <coughs> side, thin flexible brake tubes, which could, can be very long, and due to the small diameter, we have a deflection we have, which we have to compensate. Then you see a free form tube, but I would like to not to go into detail right now because uh, Mark and I will show you later live how it works. You see more complex tubes, which uh, mostly complex geometries with bent in bent geometries. The material might change to plastic tubes. Uh, we are also in the charge of wires and uh, especially in the last half year, we got more and more inquiries for cables, cabling, which are also bent by CNC benders. On the lower line in the, the right pictures, you see brackets and fittings. Thanks to the new version of Tube Inspect HRC, we are able now to measure these brackets and fixings without any adapters. We call it, uh, we, we named that Cut adapters, that means it's not any more necessary to work with hardware tools. We can just work with uh, the software itself. And on the right hand side, you see also an engine tubes, which usually have complex geometries, but also very small tolerances and the system must be able to check this as well. So, but what are the challenges to correct a freeform bender? The requirements for measurement are completely different maybe than for standard tubes. Freeform tubes are more and more used, for example, in medicine applications, in machinery, and also in architecture applications. First of all, you need a high resolution contour measurement of the tube in order to be able to define high resolution correction values. Secondly, your measurement solution you want to use must be able to measure parts within diameters of 0 0.8 up to 300 millimeters. And you have also different lengths. When you look to architecture, it could easily be that the tube is longer than 5 to 6, 10 meters. If you look to medicine applications, you have very short lengths, maybe 30 millimeters. But nevertheless, you as customer expect from us that the correction loop with a freeform bender should work in the same way as you know it from standard benders. So with high quality and fast. And then the most automated process is required from your side with a minimum interaction by an operator. And, and this is mandatory finally to get your acceptance for our solution and for you mandatory to be efficient in freeform bending as well. So today we would like to show you such a solution based on the DynoBend uh, Rembrandt Bender and the Hexagon Tube Inspect 8.2 HRC. And just to give you a better understanding what are the challenges in freeform bending is, when you look to the left hand side tube, you see that we, for example, have a transition point between the straight and the curved segment. But maybe in this case, the curved segment is with a constant radius. If it turns to real freeform radius, the uh, uh, freeform geometry, the radius is changing continuously. This is the next challenge. And then uh, step by step, maybe the full tube consists of bent segments with constant radius, with flexible radius, or with uh, straights. And on the right hand side, you see what a customer expects. He wants to bend the first tube, which is probably out of tolerance because the machine settings are new based on an IGES file. And the second or at least the third tube should be already in tolerance. And everybody who was in charge of freeform bending knows without any correction tool and correction loop, it could be really a challenge for you. But let me finish my introduction. Mark is waiting already to show you the solution. 
if you have more information about products for tube and wire inspection, I recommend to you just visit the Hexagon webpage, hexagonmi.com, and search in the search field for tube. You find a couple of articles and brochures and information you need, and do not hesitate to contact us uh, for any further questions. Now, Mark, my introduction is done. I hand over to you again, and uh, now we are excited to see how it will work. Thank you, Gunter. It was an excellent presentation. I couldn't have done that better. So I have to switch screens again back to the other presentation. Bear with me a second. So let me start with for those of you who don't um, who don't know Dynament well enough, I'd like to take liberty to briefly introduce our company to you. So for over 30 years, uh, Dynoband is a highly innovative tube bender and profile bender manufacturer. Um, with our bending solutions, we serve a wide variety of industries and applications. The common denominator is our aim to deliver the best total solution. What differentiates us from others is that we focus a lot on customer specific applications, requirement challenges, but also future expectations, and we link them to our unique machine and tooling solutions. I'd like to introduce a bit about uh, the different machine types we do. I keep it very basic, so I start with the baseline, which is called our Rembrandt line. Um, our Rembrandt tube bender is a very versatile machine. It's very easy to uh, to use and it's able to work with many different tooling systems. Uh, it's even compatible with existing tooling systems. Um, with this machine and the unique tooling systems, it can do basically all the traditional bending, like your rotary draw or push bend, either over mandrel or with a wiper die. Um, but at the same time, it can also open a new, do a new door for, for you as a customer with new capabilities, uh, touching and exploring new opportunities, for example, like we are going to, to show today within freeform bending. Having said that, um, besides our baseline, uh, we are also uh, very strong at what we call fully automated production cells, where bending is the core and related process steps like cutting, sawing, uh, and forming, robot handling, etc., are included. These type of solutions, they are typically used uh, in, a, in an environment with a low mix and uh, of product variances and a uh, high, high quantities. In these, uh, in these type of applications, in these type of environments, it's all about, uh, it's all about cycle times, process and product reliability, accuracy and repeatability. We are able to deliver production cells with optimum cycle time and up to a CPK value uh, of 1.67. And we do that by using our core technology, our core knowledge, and tailoring that into a customized solution for specific customer applications. Besides that, and that's the main aim for today, we are the technology leader in freeform bending. Um, recently, we have cracked the code on freeform bending and autocorrection and developed an algorithm that does the hard work for you. I will say, imagine how your business could look like when you widen your freeform and bending capabilities to service more customers and at the same time improve your production efficiency. One thing is that traditionally, uh, freeform uh, correction of uh, freeform parts were always, uh, always required a high skilled and experienced operator that then performed a time consuming job of trial and error based correction. And in many occasions, still to end up with a part that needs some uh, needs some re rework to be done to it. Uh, well, this resulted obviously in high scrap rates, lack of accuracy and repeatability, and all in all in an inefficient production process. With our, free our freeform capabilities combined with our user friendly tube optimizer software and hexagons measuring uh, systems are the solution in this respect. Corrections can be done for a particular part, but you can also use the correction to do uh, compensation for batch material batch variances. This groundbreaking innovation uh, will change the industry as it is pushing the boundaries of freeform bending. 
where freeform bending was always associated with the more artistic application. We see that due to the simple, accurate, repeatable and re reliable process, many other applications uh, in high end industries are also benefiting from this uh, from this technology. For example, we have a proven track record now in the medical industry, power, stair lifts, uh, also furniture industry. Besides the design possibilities freeform bending offers, it's also a much faster way of production. So before we start with, uh, with the live uh, demo, I'd like to show you a short video, a short animation of our baseline Rembrandt, similar machine to what we are going to use during the demo and talk you through uh, the basics of the machine. So here you see our Rembrandt machine. As I said, it's a very versatile and, and easy to use machine. The tool change can be done very quickly. And they are very compact tooling systems. The machine has a unprecedented freedom around the bent head, allowing for many geometries to be produced with this machine. We use the vertical uh, clamping system, but we also can adapt to horizontal, more traditional horizontal clamping systems. It's a very rigid machine with a very high accuracy and a very high booster power to have enough force to do the freeform and push bending. Everything servo controlled to have the best accuracy possible. Obviously, it's all, it also has an ergonomic design and the control cabinets are integrated in the machine frame to keep the fruit print small. That's the basis of, uh, of the machine that we are going to use today. So before, the, um, so now that we know the basis on hexagon and, uh, and dyno band, um, we will start the demo. We'll show you a full cycle from loading the initial IGES file uh, until a corrected product, including comparison of the measuring results. Uh, during today's webinar, we present a complete solution and demonstrated capabilities during this live demo. Um, the equipment that we use during the demo is our Rembrandt tube bender C405, which is a size 40 bending machine with a central rolling tool that we can use to produce freeform parts. We also will use the hexagon P8.2 HRC tube inspect to obtain the measuring results and our tube optimizer software for the auto correction. The tube opti optimizer software uh, is also compatible with other hexagon measuring solutions, like for example, the absolute arm with the RS6 scanner. The tube that we use today to produce the pre freeform part has an OD of 14.2 millimeter and a wall of 0.8 millimeter and is of welded stainless steel material. We created a random freeform part, so my colleague uh, Rule will take over and walk you through the uh, the process step by step. Uh, hello, as Mark just introduced, my name is uh, Ru Rupert. I will take you to uh, a step by step on how to use our uh, DynoBand tube optimizer uh, software. Uh, first, we'll explain a little bit about the part we are going to create. Um, as you can see in the slide, we have this uh, black line, which is the center line of the tube that we are going to create. And we have also uh, set on the uh, curvature graphs so that you can really see that it's a continuously changing radius. Uh, so it's a really um, a free form, uh, a free form part in that in that matter. Um, we will switch now over to uh, to the computers. You, you can take a walk with me through the uh, to the program. So give me a second for that one. So we are back live. Uh, you can now see a screen. And you can also see a live feed from our uh, from our camera. Uh, this is the tube inspect 8.2 we have here available today, which we are going to use for uh, for the measurement. Um, how do we start? 
we always start with our tube, optim uh, tube optimizer software. We will start a new project. We will name this one Pendulum. Here we load in the uh, target product, which uh, mostly likely the engineering department has come up with. Uh, we enter a, a, a tool specific uh, start and end length. And these are the lengths we need to uh, make the manufacturability of the part on the machine. Um, if the IGIS file already contains straight uh, start and end sections, uh, the tube optimizer will consider that as well. So the tube optimizer will now create uh, the IGIS file, which is comparable to the um, to the one we just saw on the slide. Uh, here we see this green part, which is the straight section we need at the beginning. And here we see a red section, which is the section we need at the end for uh, manufacturability. And what's interesting now is that this blue curvature is actually the product we want to have. And it's also the only section which is uh, considered by the tube optimizer. So for uh, optimizing um, suspects, only the green and the red are ignored and only the blue is considered. Um, if we now switch over here to our uh, explorer, maybe you saw it already. Um, tube optimizer has made me a new folder. In this folder, there is now a new IGES file, which is called pendulum overlength added. This one is the one which also considers the straight start and end length. I will now copy this IGES file to my machine, and then I will pick it up again at the machine. Um, I'll make the um, the video screen taller so you can uh, have a look around and uh, we're going to produce the first uncorrected part. So I'll wait a minute until the camera is, uh, is in place. OK, um, so we're now going to our freeform manager software where it can easily import the um, uh, the IGES file just created by our tube optimizer software. Uh, I could run a simulation on the uh, on the on our freeform manager to see if there are any collisions with the with the vendor machine or if the tube has any uh, issues with the uh, manufacturability. I will skip that phase for now because we have already um, done that for uh, so uh, for this project, of course. Okay. Then from that we create a, a new a CNC program for our bender. I now switch over to our bender software and load in the file we just made. And we're going to create now the first uh, part. So I will take a tube and load it into the machine. There we go. Let's take out the product. And we go over to our uh, tube inspect. I'll wait for a moment for the camera to be installed again. OK, so we place the tube into the tube inspect. I will now make the video screen smaller again. Uh, we switch to the Bending Studio software, where we do an inspection or so measurement of the of the tube itself. It has recognized the tube, and it will now compare it with the original IGES. Um, you can already see now that there's a lot of deviation to the part. Um, now, on the background, the um, Bending Studio has created an OBC file, which I can load again into my tube optimizer. And here we can see the measurement results as well. So as I just explained, we have this red section and this green section, which are ignored for the uh, uh, for the correction run. And we see here deviations of uh, 16 up to 20 millimeters for the first product. Uh, I will start now the um, automatic optimization. Uh, this takes a few minutes, which maybe for um, uh, a webinar is a little bit long. 
But uh, yeah, consider the alternatives. When you have such high deviations to your product, consider to what you would like to have. Uh, you will probably start to redoing your uh, radius table. Uh, your radius table is your basis for uh, for production. Then you redo the part and have maybe accuracy of uh, four or five millimeters left. And then it comes to your craftsmanship on how fast can you create the tube within the tolerance you want to have. Um, this most likely will take you minimum 10 and up to maybe even 50 trial and errors before you have the tube within the tolerance you would like to have. So it's a very time consuming um, element and it also takes a lot, a lot of material. Um, so we have to wait a little bit more until the uh, tube optimizer is ready. Uh, what we will see then here in our explorer as well is that a new file will here appear. So um, bear with me for a moment. There we go. So we now have this pendulum dash one, which is the corrected file which comes out of the tube optimizer. I will copy this file also to my machine. Then we go over to the machine again. I will make the video screen large so you can, uh, can have a look with me. I go back into our freeform manager software. I import this new IGES file just created by the uh, system. I create a new CNC program. I go back to our uh, machine operating system. I refresh the program. And also start it again. So now I will place the second tube into our uh, bender. And we will now produce the corrected part. So we go again back to the tube inspect. Wait a bit for the camera again. Okay. So I take out the old one. Put in the corrected version. Now we go back to the bending studio. We do a new uh, measurement. You can already see in this vision that the uh, tube has uh, yeah, increased in uh, accuracy a lot, but we switch back to the tube optimizer to have an accurate view. Because as I explained, the green and the red zone will be ignored. So as you can see, the, the green goes still out by 10 millimeters, but this part will be cut off anyway, so only the blue section is of interest. And there the uh, yeah, accuracy goes here a little bit above a millimeter. And as an average, uh, yeah, right on the spot compared to the 20 millimeters deviation we had uh, in the first instance. And this is really how easy uh, yeah, you can do automated correction with our uh, tube optimizer software. So um, I thank you for your attention and I'll give the, the microphone back to uh, to Mark. Um, thank you. Yeah, Rule, thank you very much. Uh, great demonstration. So uh, I hope that all of you have seen that uh, with this technology, you will not only be ready for the future, you will be leading the way. Um, I'd like to thank Rule for his, uh, for his demo. And of course, I'd like to thank Gunter uh, as well. Um, and obviously, uh, we thank you, all of you, for attending the, uh, the webinar. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us uh, if you've not already done that in the chat section. Um, as I said in the beginning, this webinar is also recorded. So if you'd like to have the recording, please let us know and we share it with you. Uh, wish you all a great day and thank you very much for your attention.